Okay. Um, so we're going to have a talk about uh, biophilia, the nature within us. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a biomimicry architect uh, and I'm a part of uh, Biomimicry NL, as you can see on my logo here. And um, I work together uh, with Saskia uh, on several projects. Um, in these times of, of COVID, um, I find a lot of interest in, in biophilia for interior design because we need more healthy spaces. So my, my client base is growing on this. And I thought it would be uh, also great for you to have an idea on how to implement biophilia within your own home or office. So uh, biophilia is the love of nature. So bio means uh, life and philia uh, means love. And humans have always been, sorry? Can you put off your microphone, please? Uh, humans have always been uh, drawn to, dependent on, and fascinated by the natural world. So uh, it's the idea that um, our fascination and communion uh, with nature stem from an innate, uh, biologically driven need to interact with other forms of life. So as you can see here, um, th this is a, a pattern of a leaf, and you see the pattern in your hand. Uh, it has a lot of similarities and there are a lot of patterns we can recognize in nature uh, which make us feel at home. So um, during this presentation I'm going to have a few topics uh, just to give it some structure. So I'm going to introduce myself uh, really shortly, uh, then help you find the nature within yourself, uh, how to create healthy spaces with biophilic design, uh, creating nature in space, and uh, I have some takeaways. So, of course, this is a Biomimicry Boost Festival, so the, I, I would really love to, to help you find a connection uh, with Biomimicry and Biophilia. So, maybe some of you know this uh, schedule already, it's the essential elements from the Biomimicry Resource Handbook of Dana Baumeister. And, uh, Mostly uh, biomimicry looks at the emulate part. It's the most popular for, from this point of view, like um, the Kingfisher and the train and Velcro and the Thistle. Uh, I don't think I have to explain this to you. You all have an interest in, in biomimicry, so I think you know these examples. So ethos is, is the why, and the reconnect is actually linked to uh, biophilic design. So uh, and what, what is kind of nice, because um, biophilic design is the love of nature and how to connect uh, with nature. We are nature ourselves. Um, and this helps also to um, elevate our ethos. So if we know we are nature and the connection is important, we will probably take care of, of uh, nature better. So um, if you want to know about the, the background of biophilia, the theory, that it's this book about from, from uh, Edward E. O. Wilson. And um, he has done a study and uh, wanted to prove how our relationship with nature is, is beneficial for our, uh, our body and our mind. So if you want to go deeper into theory, this is one of the things you could uh, look at. Now, um, short about me, so the nature within me, me as an architect. Um, this is my direct connection with nature all, all of the day, my daily connection with nature. This is my pot latte. And um, well, there's, there's a, a growing research on how um, actually the connection with our pets benefits uh, our health. Um, there's a lot of research on this and one of the things is that the connection with our pets can heal our bodies. So um, the American Heart Association stated that owning a pet might be associated with lower heart disease, uh, risk of heart disease. Uh, it reduces stress and, a per for, for example, if you have a purring cat on your lap, it is instantly uh, relaxing. Uh, or maybe if you have a dog, you have to have some physical activity walking the dog. So this, this is uh directly related to uh, a lower risk of heart disease the other thing is that the connection to pets can help your emotions so uh, there are living uh, creatures with whom we have a deep meaningful relationship i think everyone loves their pet um, and at times we feel uh, less connected to people and more connected to uh, your pet 
So your pet is always happy when you come home um, and it, it doesn't judge you. So this feels comfortable for us. It also pets also help to connect us to each other because, for example, I have uh, an Instagram account for my cat. So there are a lot of cat movies all over the world and, and people like to share uh, their pets. But also if you uh, go outside uh, and have a chat with a with a fellow dog lover, for example, this has um, um, less. Um, it makes it easier to contact people. So. Um, when I was small, um, this this is actually a cartoon that really uh, relates relates to me. So, and I think to a lot of you too. Um, it says maybe it's pretty how uh, uh, maybe it's pretty, but how can I carry my frog and worms in a dress with no pockets? So, as as a kid, we have a strong relationship with nature, and for me, this uh, I'm, I'm giving you an example. For me, this was when I um, went to my grandma and grandpa. And uh, I found a frog in the, in the yard, uh, a toad actually, and I was completely biologized with this. I put it in, in, in my uh, pocket and took it home and um, uh, placed it in, my, in the drawer of my nightstand. And at night when I was awake, I would put on the light and just look at it, just being mesmerized by this, this creature there. Of course, the, the following morning, I felt a little bit guilty and I thought, okay, maybe you will not survive uh, in my drawer. So I told my mom and we put it back into nature. But these kind of things that you are completely fascinated by nature and want to study it, uh, this is how what I think is uh, the biophilic link and also what makes me uh, want to do biomimicry. So um, if you look in, into the 3.8 billion years of research and development of nature, you can get mesmerized every time. You can be a little bit, uh, you can be hit again. So my office is called Vrij Architecte. And um, when I was small, a kid, I wanted to be a veterinarian or an architect. And I was drawing all the time. So I thought, OK, uh, being an architect is a, is a good uh, path for me. Um, but within architecture, I think um, architecture is a technical skin. And you see that um, it's this, uh, you have actually three skins. So you have the skin of your own own body, your 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 uh, physical skin. Then you have your clothes. Those are the protective skin of, uh, of your skin. <laughs> and then you have the skin of the, the facade of the building that which protects you. And architecture as a technical discipline, I think um, all technical disciplines come closer to the body. Uh, for example, your phone is actually an extension of your hand. So I think architecture will come closer to the body too. And this was why I initially started to be interested in biomimicry uh, and uh, essentially uh, biophilia because of the sensory part of this. Uh, and um, now I'm very happy to be able to bring nature and architecture together. So, um, so this was enough about me. Now uh, about you, uh, the nature within us. Um, I'm just wondering um, if you uh, need to think of an environment right now uh, which you are very happy in. So um, just think about a place where you would love to be right now, uh, somewhere. Just give you a, a, a short minute. Maybe keep your uh, microphones off. Um, well, I think almost all of you have placed yourself in a place in nature. Every time I ask is when I give a lecture or a workshop or whatever, uh, I'm not even saying that you need, I didn't say you have to pick a natural environment. You could have picked your bedroom or whatever, or your office. But usually if people think about a place where they can relax and, uh, and be, uh, what, what's their most fond memory of being in an environment, it's usually nature. So, um, one of the things I think is this is also the nature within us. So um, the Japanese have, have, uh, have um, an idea of that this is, this is really important to you. And um, they have a thing called forest bathing, Shinrin Yuku. So forest bathing is actually taking a spa into the forest, a visit into forest for relaxation and to improve yourself, uh, your, your health. So when you live in a city, you have a lot of uh, stimulants, a lot of um, um, 
uh, you, you, all your buttons are pressed. You have overstimulation of your of your senses, and uh, these are not the the natural um, uh, stimulation of your senses. So this is kind of um, um, stressful for you. So when you go into a forest uh, and you and you close up your senses. So when you go into a forest, there are, um, actually this speaks to a different way to your senses. So. Um, it, it, you can recover from mental fatigue, um, your heart rate slows down, uh, your blood pressure is reduced, and you have lower anxiety when you go into a forest. So I think most of you also now during COVID times love to take a walk outside and just uh, be in nature. And uh, because um, it's the idea of being more healthy, uh, relaxed, um, and um, this forest baiting actually helps you to be uh, more comfortable. So, um, one of the other things that I thought was very interesting with the, within the nature within us was our love for small animals, for babies. So, uh, of course, they are very cute, but why are they cute? So, um, it actually gives them, they, the, the researchers think, it gives them an evolution, evolutionary advantage. So the chance of survival is bigger if we think they are cute. So um, our love for nature helps them uh, to be alive or helps us to be more conducive to life. So um, we, are, we are mammals, of course, and we are tr attracted to babies, and these are baby animals. Um, and this love is actually transcending species. So we don't only love our babies, we also love animal babies. And this is because they have like smaller, smaller paws, feet, hands, uh, ears, stuff like that. They have big eyes and a big head. And this is the way nature helps us uh, recognize baby uh, babies in general. And um, if we think they're cute, we will probably be less um, um, uh, stimulated to kill them. So, um, so this is the, actually the nature within us. So how we relate to nature uh, uh, with our bodies and our minds. Um, so creating healthy spaces, how do we do this with the biophilic design? There is a, a company called Terrapin who, create, who actually um, did the economics of biophilia. So if you want to sell this to a company, you have to have proof that this actually works. So they did some research on this. And as you can see, well, in a natural environment in schools, uh, it can be part of education. So you can teach children what kind of plants you have here or what kind of benefits these plants have. And next to that, you see a wolf with a, with a small wolf, a puppy in the blue area. Um, but what it also, what they found out is what if kids uh, go uh, to 20 to 60 percent faster through their curriculum when they learn in an environment with a lot of daylight. So um, as you can see here, there's a lot of daylight uh, relationship with nature. Um, it tends to have uh, to uh, make you focus more, uh, actually be smarter uh, because it's, uh, you are living in complex systems. Um, and uh, daylight gives you more concentration. So, also, I, I know for uh, for us in the Netherlands, um, our healthcare system is really into biophilic design. Um, all our, of our hospitals have natural materials or uh, images related to nature or big windows looking outside. Uh, this is really a focus. For example, if I'm at the dentist office and like this image here, I look. At the ceiling, I can see a forest or um, uh, um, clouds, a sky with clouds and some sun. Uh, this gives you less uh, experience of pain. It gives you less stress. And when you look at this, for Terrapin found out is when you have a room with a view on nature, when you're in, in hospital, you spend 8.5% um, less time there. So uh, I think that's a, a pretty uh, big financial benefit. For the hospital um, uh, and for the people of course so these are examples of uh, interface the flooring maybe you know them also from the tactiles uh, the gecko inspired um, uh, glue um, uh, little little glue patches um, 
when you look at an office uh, and you have a relationship with nature, 10% of the absence of employees is due to uh, architecture without the connection to nature. So if you want healthy employees and really relate them to the office, uh, and, um, it's better to have uh, natural uh, elements in your office. So uh, for help creating healthy spaces, now, well, I thought COVID was a pretty interesting uh, topic to also um, tackle here. Um, COVID um, is airborne, but it's also uh, uh, transmitted by uh, your hands, for example, by touching it. And um, what we now have is a big focus on healthy spaces with ventilation and on net mechanical ventilation. So. The more mechanical ventilation, the better, because then you suck out the, the virus and uh, put it into, into the environment where uh, it's less um, able to survive. But what we actually forget is that uh, we have to clean this mechanical ventilation once in a while. I'm not sure uh, how many people have houses with, if you have a house from after, I think, 2000, here in the Netherlands, you probably have mechanical ventilation. and. I don't know if anyone ever cleans this, but this is like a really big problem uh, for, for the long term. Because if you look at the right, this is how these ventilation systems look from the inside. So, and especially with um, trying to get more uh, heat also from the, from the um, air that you blow out, uh, you want to have the heat exchange for the, for the air that comes in. I think it's pretty risky to have these dirty ventilation systems. But with biophilic design, I think there are some uh, several options how we can solve this. So natural ventilation, I think this is really underestimated in the building world. I think we should have a, a good look at this because the regulations now in the, in the building world say natural ventilation, it makes it almost impossible to have natural ventilation because uh, you make a big gap and people want to have like the house completely sealed off um, from air. So the heat will be stay will stay inside, but uh, with keeping the heat inside, you also keep the contaminated air inside. And you see that a lot of schools actually now have the most polluted indoor quality air that there is. So um, not good for con concentration, not good for your health. So I, I really want to uh, make a statement that we should look at natural ventilation. Um, another thing we can do uh, for preventing COVID is uh, natural antibacterial properties. Uh, I think uh, everyone knows a wooden chopping board, and maybe you don't even know why you use a wooden chopping board, why they are made of wood. This is because this wood has um, properties, well, just chemical properties, natural properties that kill bacteria. So. Uh, instead of making a steel um, hand gliding uh, part for your for your stairs, why not make a wood one and uh, preferably not a painted one, but just really one made of uh, beach, for example. This would kill bacteria instantly, and I think it would prevent uh, getting us COVID more, uh, getting us COVID or transmit it. So. Um, a few things about creating healthy spaces and how do we create nature in space? So biophilic design, um, this is actually how you can do it yourself. So I'm giving you some uh, ideas and uh, uh, tools on how to do the, uh, make your own biophilic interiors. So these are 14 patterns um, and um, you can, can use them all or some of them. Usually, if you use one, you you also use another one. So these are all related to each other. They're nature and space, natural analogs, and characteristics of space. So um, I'm just gonna point out a few of them. Uh, maybe some that are I thought that were pretty interesting, and I have some projects that I can help you explain them with. So uh, the first one is dynamic and diffuse light. So um, I did an interior for uh, Chateau Latrousse. And uh, what I really wanted to do, because there are really nice big windows there, I want to bring in light as much as possible. So what I did uh, using dynamic and diffuse light, so the light from outside is actually dynamic because it changes over time. 
and making it diffuse is with this white curtain. So if the light falls on these white curtains, it's more diffuse and it helps you uh, not having those really black and white shadows. So it's, it's getting more uh, a comfortable light. Then connection with the natural system. So you have like the weather outside is a natural system or the, or the, the daylight, the day, the, the, how the day works from morning to evening, uh, the sunrise, but also uh, season changes as a connection with natural systems. And another one, a material connection with nature is, for example, uh, I've used a wooden floor. This gives warmth uh, and uh, a pleasure. So most of the interior is white, so the wooden floor is really uh, um, standing out. Um, I'm, I'm just explaining, like, uh, for, for this design that there are multiple um, patterns you can find here. And then the other, other projects, I will just keep it with one. So. Um, for example, here nature, this is again the interior in La Pousse, and this has um, uh, light everywhere from above. So this uh, is also dynamic and diffuse light. The material connection with nature through this light, this, re this red and light, and refuge, because all the light comes from above. So it creates like, this is the bedroom, a safe space. Another thing I did with light was uh, I helped signify that used to be Philips uh, develop this Nature Connect, and this is actually uh, a daylight, but it's it's not it's for offices that have uh, not not enough uh, natural light, and they can place this artificial daylight within their offices, and it has like all of the benefits uh, that natural light has. So. Uh, also the spectrum of light and also um, the, dy the dynamics of the natural light. You, um, it's nice, this is a really nice film, but I I'm, I'm have too short of time to, uh, to explain this to you. So connection with natural systems, that's another one. So I explained that uh, before, uh, like uh, connection to uh, seasonal change. What I did here is for the interior, uh, uh, for the Abdij van Berne, um, remove the curtains so they have a big gorgeous garden and uh, they were blocked out of this garden because there were all curtains there and they just removed the curtains of course i did the rest of the interior too but that already helps to so sometimes you don't have to add things but you can also remove things so biomorphic forms and patterns for example what i did uh, with uh, these uh, honeycomb is actually create uh, a facade this is called a flexagon, and um, I relate, this is also a honeycomb shape, so uh, it's material efficient and also relates to our human nature. And as you can see here, I have uh, one of the, the elements is um, uh, a biomimicry element, and this is related to the hygroscopic work functioning of a pine cone. And I'll show you a short movie of this. So. This is actually uh, how a pine cone works when it dries out. I think you've probably seen this before. So it opens up. And this is actually how it works uh, within the facade. So if you spray it, it opens naturally. And if you let it dry, it closes. And this is actually um, an element for shading the sun um, in a natural way, just using sunlight. This is uh, an idea of the of uh, um, where I. Uh, this is my biomimicry academy where I applied this facade. Uh, you can also have green elements in it. So the material connection with nature is like uh, I did this interior in Amsterdam. Uh, you have this moss circle. Uh, this is also placed in the kitchen and. Moss is not only referring to nature, but it's also cleaning the air. So especially for in a kitchen, this is really good because there's a lot of fine dust in the kitchen when you cook. Um, I use some natural wood here, uh, natural local wood uh, from a beech tree. And then uh, also the black is a, as an, as a natural uh, coating. And uh, I use some rattan, uh, handmade rattan uh, shelves. Um, the, my client was Asian, so I used uh, bamboo also for his bathroom. Uh, I used cork also as sound insulation for the stairways and some droplets, uh, droplet-related uh, lights. 
And uh, for mystery, I thought this, this, this was a good one. For a shop interior in Amsterdam, I suggested that they could do this cave-like uh, idea, or maybe also this is an, um, a leaf, um, and this is open. So uh, I projected it behind the stairs. So if someone comes up, you don't really see them. That it's kind of a mystery who it is, but you know there is someone walking there. So uh, this is the print, and we're going to laser cut this. And then um, I have some a few takeaways. So uh, for biophilic design takeaways. So we are nature. Uh, please find the nature within you. Uh, try to use biophilic design to create healthy spaces. And to help you, yeah, you can use the 14 patterns of biophilic design. So if you want to have more uh, information, this is my website. You can also find me on the website of Barnum Cornell. And uh, this is actually what I wanted to say. So